If you think you've been the victim of an unjust selection, then call Smith, Smith & Ford. It sounds like an advert for a solicitor's firm, but it is the question that came up the most in the comments section. That is, who should be the fly half for England right now and in the future? Should it be George Ford, Marcus Smith or Finn Smith? And then, of course, we'll bring in Owen Farrell as well for comparison, because the question today is, who is the best fly half? And that's a bit tongue in cheek, because spoiler, the answer is there is no right answer. But Borthwick has to make a decision. In this Six Nations, it was going to be a big call between Marcus Smith and George Ford starting. Marcus Smith was injured at the beginning of the Six Nations, so it was made for him. And George Ford had a couple of great games at the end of the Six Nations, which makes him the holder of the shirt. But who should have it going forward? Of course, we've got Owen Farrell going off to France, so he's not available. But Owen Farrell is a really useful yardstick to compare these others to. So let's have some fun. Let's play top trumps with England's fly half options and Owen Farrell for comparison, score them out of 100. Now, of course, don't worry if you disagree with the scores I give. It's there to stimulate discussion. This is kind of how I see it at the moment. Let me know what you think, because Borthwick has to make his decision this year, next year, whatever it is, but back it 100%, because there are pros and cons for every choice out there. So let's go into my first category of experience. And of course, it's a catch-22, because if you're not picked, there's nothing you can do about this one. But George Ford, I'm scoring him 90, because he's got 91 caps for England not quite as many as Owen Farrell but he's pretty much been there every time Farrell has been there no Lions caps if that matters I am putting them in there as well but incredibly experienced he is a cool head he's been there done that and it does help when you face a situation you have been in before Marcus Smith 31 caps and he's been on a Lions tour of course I'm saying 60 because he's got a decent wedge of experience he's seen quite a lot he is maturing and you can see it but at times he still looks a little green, making a few wrong decisions that someone like Ford or Farrell might not. Of course, Finn Smith with his three caps is going to be the lowest. There's nothing he can do about that. So he's on 20, but let's see how he develops. And Owen Farrell, I'm scoring him 100, 112 caps for England, seven for the Lions. Is there any situation this guy hasn't been in? So he is the barometer there. Then on to passing. 95 for George Ford. I think he's got super soft short passes. He's a really good deception player. You know, you can't tell what he's going to do in the face of the attack. Very good at taking it flat to the line. Last minute pass selection. 95, really strong score for him. Now, Marcus Smith still gets a decent score of 75. Very dangerous on the draw and give, particularly because of his speed. Makes the defenders worry. So he does suck in defenders two on one. Maybe a little bit better than the other two. He's got decent deception, but no higher than the others. And maybe just slightly lightly to select let running over passing maybe sometimes at the wrong time so that just brings him down a touch but still a very fine player then on to Finn Smith I'm saying he's 80 actually from the little we've seen of him and of course looking at club level he spots overlaps really really naturally he's very confident with his long passes very calm in the face of defense and he's still improving I see a very natural passer here 80 for him and then 85 for Owen Farrell He's probably got the quickest pass if he really goes for it. He's got some serious fizz on that ball. A little stiff mover, which makes his deception a little bit lower, but his selection is often very, very good. So he's 85, so pretty close there. But maybe George Ford pipping it there for the guys available for Steve Borthwick. Then on to kicking. George Ford, I'm saying he's 80. His kicking has been off at times and he's worked on his range, which was never the biggest. He's the most likely to pull a trigger on a drop goal and his tactical kicking can be masterful sometimes. Then on to Marcus Smith, I'm saying 75 and he's definitely improved his kicking. He's improved his goal kicking. His tactical kicking has improved a lot, but it wasn't the best to start with sometimes. Historically, maybe not quite as natural as some of the others, but still a very good kicker, 75. Now, Finn Smith, I'm giving 90, the highest out of all of them because he's got a real natural long range on his kicks brilliant dead eye kicker and he spots the cross kick really nicely soft touches on his kicks I rate him very highly so I'm saying 90 am I bringing a bit of potential into this maybe but I'm just trying to make the point of the comparisons that a coach might have to make Owen Farrell by comparison is a big moment kicker proven at the big times he tends to pull the trigger so I'm saying he's kind of an 85 for comparison then on to running threat and of course fly halves don't have to be the best runners but it does help if they carry a threat themselves George Ford was definitely nippy when he was young never that quick but he has lost a bit of pace doesn't really have the sidestep or the power threat so he has to be down at about a 50 on to Marcus Smith I think he's the highest of the bunch on 90 
and he's worked really hard this year and improved his sprint speed, his power, his acceleration. Definitely over the long distance, seems a lot better. Hence, he's now capable to play at 15 and counter-attack. He's always had a wicked sidestep and hitch kick, and he makes the most clean breaks out of the lot, so he's scoring highly there on 90. Finn Smith, I'm still fairly undecided here. I'm giving him 75 for now. He's definitely no slouch. He can exploit gaps. I'm not saying he's absolute blistering speed. We'll see where he goes, but at the moment, around about a 75. Owen Farrell was never really a speedster, but is the most likely to make some gain line busting because he has got that power and size. His footwork was never amazing, never really his big forte, so 60 for him. Then on to the psychology of the player, and fly half is a high pressure situation, so this is a really important factor. And I'm scoring George Ford probably the highest here because he's super focused, but he's also very composed. It doesn't tend to boil over with him and really accomplished at coordinating an attack, being very cool often he's been the number two to Owen Farrell maybe but he's never stopped being a leader coordinating the team so I'm putting there as 95 Marcus Smith I'm just marking down a touch on 75 his big positive is his enthusiasm he's incredibly likable he's really really enthusiastic very positive to the people around him which can help a lot this can spill over a little bit to manic sometimes Maybe he forces things a bit and you want him just to calm down, especially in that international arena, which is different from playing to Harlequins. So if he's going to become the main man for England, he may have to curb this a little. I think he's getting there, but at the moment I'm saying 75 out of 100. Then on to Finn Smith, and I'm actually giving him 80 because I see him as an old head on young shoulders. He's come into a new club, Northampton, only 21, and taken on that mantle as general. I don't see any real weaknesses. Of course, he hasn't put under that big pressure of lots of starts for England yet, but I do see lots of good potential in him, so I'm saying 80. Then Owen Farrell for comparison, I'm saying about 85. He is a real winner. That's the big thing for him. Describes him to a T, never accepts second best. This can drive standards, but also can be quite spiky. He's the sort of guy you'd want on your team, but you'd hate to play against. He can be a bit smirky and petulant, so that just pulls him down a touch. I'm saying George Ford, probably the highest there. And then behind him on the guys available for Borthwick, probably Finn Smith over uh, Marcus Smith. Physicality, tackling is important. If your fly half can't hold his own in defence, it's a problem. If they can hit above their own, if you like, be a bit of a banger in defence, that's a bonus. On to George Ford. Well, he does score quite low here on 55. 86 kilos. I have put some stats up there. Of course, take it with a pinch of salt from websites what their heights and weights are, but it's more what they actually do on the pitch than their size. Now, George Ford, interestingly, has actually developed a tackling technique that suits him quite well. He is going for the upright tackle, but because he's so short, he doesn't really get caught with high tackles, and he tries just to stay on his feet, wait for help, and strip the ball. We've seen that work for him a lot in this Six Nations. He's not going to dominate tackles. He's not really bringing people to ground that quickly but he's not really a massive weak link that he could have been in defense because he is so small but still he's quite low on a 55. Marcus Smith is a bit better on 65. In the early days I think defense was a definite weakness which he's worked hard on and different to George Ford he's gone for the low tackle as his stock tackle. Take the legs take them down. He will still miss tackles though he hasn't quite got that top end power to explode into tackles but it's improved 65. Finn Smith, again, very early days, but I'm trying to make some comparisons, try not to sit on the fence. I'm saying he's a little better in defence um, at 75, very reliable, doesn't take a step back and slightly more powerful in the tackle than those other two. Then on to Owen Farrell. He's a 95, physically a real threat at fly half. Of course, it's been no secret. I've liked him to have his tackles down a bit, a bit too rugby league for me, but goodness me, he does hit hard. We saw in his games for Saracens recently, that one at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium against Harlequins, counter-rucking like an absolute beast. He's a scary guy there, maybe one of the most physical fly halves ever in international rugby. 95 for him to compare against the rest. The others are actually slightly lower, slightly less defensive weapons, if you like. And Finn Smith, again, may be the best call there for defence. Then finally, potential. And this is important. Picking a fly half for now and the future, you want to know how many years they've got left. Are they going to go with the team towards a World Cup or however you like to look at it? It is a thing to think about. George Ford, I'm scoring 30 at 31 years old. His skills are at the peak. He's slowing down the touch. He's still got a few good years in him as well. So if you're going to go with him, you've just got to have it in the back of your mind. He's not going to be your main man forever. Then Marcus Smith, I'm saying 80 at 25. 
He's still got plenty of years in him to get better and better. It's kind of the sweet spot where he's kind of mature but still has lots of years left. So 80 for him. And Finn Smith, I'm saying, is 90. Obviously the highest because he's the youngest. There's room for improvement, but I would say arguably that his fundamentals are better than Marcus Smith's when he was 21 so maybe he's got an even bigger ceiling than Marcus Smith we will see so 90 there and of course Owen Farrell the oldest of the lot down at 20 if he was to play for England again it would only be for a year or two um, so he is down low now I know Owen Farrell isn't available for selection but I think it's good for comparison Hopefully I've made a fairly decent job of illustrating how working out the best fly half is really, really hard. It depends what the coach wants, how he wants the team to play. And whoever you go for, you want to stick with that guy and build a team around him. Now, if you watch this channel, you know that I did want Marcus Smith to have a run of games in the 10 shirt for England in the Six Nations just to see if he could step up to that mantle. Who's it going to be? Who's going to be the long-term fly half? Does he stick with the experience of George Ford until he's too old, until he retires? Does he go to the more exciting player of Marcus Smith, the more running attack? Or does he go to the young all-rounder who doesn't seem to have a weakness of Finn Smith? Or does Owen Farrell come back and take it all back from all three? That would be interesting. Love to know what you think. Pop all the comments below. If you like these sorts of videos, it would be great if you like the video, subscribe. That would be amazing. Love to know what you think, and I'll catch you next time.